so as we inch closer to WrestleMania, here's another tidbit, March 3rd Observer, and I'd, I'd like to hear your take on it. Um, let me preface this by saying that Meltzer is kind of, he, he's, he baby faces you, he goes heel on this a little bit. Um, so I'm interested to hear uh, how you feel by the end of it. A few weeks back, virtually everyone inside was saying that Ted DiBiase would win, which makes sense since it sets up Titan's 829 pay-per-view card in which Ted can drop the title to Hogan. However, even though I fully agree that DiBiase is the best wrestler in the WWF and probably the best at this stage of his career of anyone who has worked for Titan in 15 years, he can't draw his champion. That may be immaterial since Titan can't draw for months after WrestleMania anyway, and at certain times of the year, really can only draw when Hogan is on the card. So there may be no answer to Titan's summer drawing problems for this year anyway. So uh, he continues, DiBiase didn't draw in his one week dry run as champion in California, traditionally Titan's hottest corner of the U.S. aside from the Northeast. And his main event last Monday at the Garden with Bam Bam Bigelow drew the smallest MSG crowd in years. Still, nobody but Hogan himself is going to sell out buildings at this summer. So uh, again, just Meltzer's opinion. But the, the thing about, about that is that Nobody recognized me as the real champion. Right. You understand? Yes. I mean, that's the deal. I mean, uh, I have the belt, but I didn't have the belt because I beat Hogan. I had the belt because I bought it from Andre, you know, as the storyline went. So that, you know, you know, you gotta, you, you can't, you can't forget about that when you're looking at this. We have to put it into context. Yeah, you got to put you got to you got to put it into context. You know, like nobody saw me as the real world champion. Now, if I had gone out there and and had a match, uh, like a single match with Hogan, and and we go neck and neck and neck, and, and you know we 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 put in the time and and somehow I win, then I think you know yeah then yeah then I think I would have had that crowd. For sure. But just to say that, you know, based on what he's saying, uh, let's say I, I, I couldn't draw, that's ridiculous. Agree. It's kind of like a, an elementary school way to look at it, like just very yeah. basic, uh, bland, without, again, without taking the, the full thing into context. Uh, you know, I, I do want to ask, and he, he mentioned it here, and I think that you and I touched on it uh, lightly last week. Um, but you would wear the belt at a handful of untelevised events in some uh, big cities, and you're introduced by the ring announcer as the WWF champion. Yeah. Um, and years later, Vince would do the same thing with Luger as well um, to get a gauge for how the audience would react to seeing him with the belt. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know we all know how it turned out. You wound up being the million dollar champion. It was way better. But at this time, did you feel like Vince was trying to assess you as his champion during these appearances? Uh, you know, I never really thought about it. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, I, I, I knew what we were doing uh, and, and I, I knew that they were going to, you know, uh, what was coming, you know, like, well, you didn't really win the belt, you know, so we're going to have this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and uh, just to put things into further context with the with the Meltzer remarks, uh, he relies on secondhand information for almost everything where somebody's telling him, hey, here's what the reaction was like at this house. You know, so it's uh, again, he's not putting it into context. He's relying on secondhand information. So I want to hear your uh, recollection of it. Do you remember what kind of reactions you were getting from the crowd when you came out with the belt? A lot of heat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. A lot of heat. You know, because everybody knew, knew you know, it's kind of like you didn't win it. You know? Right. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, um, you know, my whole my whole thing and in, in the character of the million dollar man is I'm going to prove to you that I can. I can buy anything, including the world title, you know? And so Andre is going to beat Hogan. I'm going to be the champion because he's going to sell me the title. That was the story. And that's what we ran with, you know, and, 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 you know, uh, and again, like, like I said, we ended up in a lot of now when it, when it got to be Hogan and Savage against Andre and Ted, all oh, that blew, that was big. That was huge. Again, you know, it's like, um, regardless of what Meltzer says. Uh, and again, it's always, it's always a vote. Uh, and the WWF took off and, and became this uh, superpower that, you know, I mean, basically all of the territories went away, but there's a whole lot of wrestlers and there were a whole lot of territories. And when it came down to who's going to be the next NWA world heavyweight champion, there were only three names in the hat. Yep. 
DiBiase, Dusty Rhodes, and Ric Flair. And Dusty and Rick both ended up having that. I didn't because I, I went to New York. But you, uh, in all likelihood, would have. I would know have. that exactly. I, I know that that's how they viewed you. And yeah, I think that that's kind of an underrated part of this whole story. And it's something we're going to discuss eventually in, in long form whenever we talk about your arrival in the, the WWF uh, in 87. But before he was going to the WWF, Ted, Ted had an offer from JCP. And I believe that you had agreed kind of in principle on the surface to, to join them. And then Vince all of a sudden said, hey, I've got this really incredible gimmick and I want to talk to you about it. And next thing you know, you're headed off to New York. But I've, I've heard Flair say it. I've heard a lot of people say it. Not only would you have been champion, but Flair himself has even said, like, I wanted Ted to be in the Four Horsemen. 